enjoyed this. Uh, there's all, obviously nicotine could be a three hour <laughs> discussion easily. So I'm gonna kind of basically focus on tobacco uh, and then I'm gonna talk about vaping since that's the more current problem. Uh, and even today I saw an email uh, that the feds are working on what to do about vaping and of course the issues with lung disease and all these things. So uh, that's becoming a big, uh, a big issue as well. Um, so I did pull some slides from uh, Corey Kendrick, who works uh, at our Summit County Public Health Department and also the CDC. Uh, just to remind everybody that addiction, even though they've talked about cigarettes for a long time, uh, they really didn't even start talking about addiction as a disease at the federal government level until November of 2016. Uh, so stigma is there not as much for nicotine, although I think in a positive way, it's become stigmatized that as people are aware it's dangerous for your health. Uh, and then vaping was seen to be the uh, savior for that until, of course, uh, lung disease started popping up, uh, probably related to additives uh, in it, but they're still really working on that to figure that out. So addiction, I'll just touch on this real fast. Addiction is a brain disease. Uh, and of course, that means that it's not a moral failing or a weakness or something of that nature, which is really what uh, many lay people still, I think less so with the opiate epidemic. I think that's been the, perhaps the one positive that's come out of the opiate epidemic is decreasing stigma uh, around addiction as a disease. And so we're able to talk about it more. Uh, it's really more in the midbrain. So it's not, but what happens is it hijacks our thought process. Uh, so once you have an addiction, your brain now will, will basically be fooled, the frontal lobes, into finding ways to obtain the substance to which you're addicted. And that is, of course, then the definition of addiction. You're spending your time either using, uh, thinking about using, or finding uh, the substance to use. Uh, and it ends up, of course, meaning you don't do the other things in your life. So it ends up affecting your social aspects, work aspects, academic aspects, and the like uh, because of that. And that's true for all of these, including cigarettes. So, um, you know, maybe cigarettes are easier because they're inexpensive, although they've been going up in price. Uh, but people spend a lot of time. And of course, people take so-called smoke breaks. Uh, and so I imagine that phrase is in the uh, official dictionary <clears throat> because it's so common uh, that people have done that. It's gotten different now that many organizations have said, no, you can't smoke in the organization. We did the same thing at the state hospital at North Coast and events at the other state hospitals followed suit. The prison systems also did that. Uh, and you can see here, why is this? So we have natural rewards. Uh, our systems have a reward pathway. Our dopamine levels regulate that. So the, the faster your dopamine goes up, the more addictive in effect the substance is. So food uh, is certainly addictive uh, for good reason. We have to eat to survive. And in fact, when newborns are born, one of the first things that happens is they're given some sugar. Uh, and they're given sugar because they want to make that connection between eating is good and dopamine, right, and the, and the brain. So there's a connection that's made immediately uh, because, of course, they need to feed. <laughs> uh, one of the big issues that happens at, around childbirth uh, really is there's a big push, of course, for uh, breastfeeding. and. We need to get that the baby to realize they need to eat. Up to that point, they were getting all the nutrition from the mother uh, directly through the umbilical cord. Uh, sex, of course, also high reward dopamine release, and that, of course, is because we need to procreate as a species. Uh, if we didn't, if sex was not enjoyable, then we would spend a lot more time doing intellectual pursuits, and we'd have a lot less of a population. Eventually, we potentially uh, have no population. So take those two natural normal things that we all do and move it over to drugs and you can see here very similar look at the spike for nic amphetamines look how nicotine is really darn similar <laughs> uh, in terms of how it affects the brain uh, you can see that cocaine's a little less rapid now some of that depends on how you take it in to your body uh, and then of course morphine which is what all of the opiates and opioids ultimately the brain sees or morphine it just gives you a sense of how this affects uh, the uh, the brain in terms of the dopamine release in the various parts of the brain uh, and why they're very similar uh, to food and sex. Those numbers are very different. And the numbers are very different. Look at this. Look at the big spike. So you see food and sex in the 150 or 200 range, and look at where we're at. Exactly right. Look at where we're at. A thousand, 
writes 350. And in, indeed, and I won't belabor this much, we can move on to the rest of this about nicotine, but indeed, that is why these take precedence over food or sex. So when somebody develops an addiction, let's say to amphetamine, which is coming back, we're seeing a lot more methamphetamine uh, nationally as well as Ohio and Summit County where I spent some of my time, um, it's because of this. So they don't, they don't want to eat. They would much rather have the dopamine spike from methamphetamine. Uh, and so much so that they had, as you are all, all aware, I don't know how many years ago now, probably 10 years ago, or Sarah might know exactly, uh, they had to move uh, some of the over-the-counter drugs behind the counter because people were using and turning them into methamphetamine. All uh, right, so that, that was a problem. That tells you how, what a craving that was. They would go in and, and buy up or shoplift a whole bunch of, of the uh, Sudafed, and then they would go home and do their bathtub methamphetamine or uh, the shaker jars and all the various things and sometimes blow their houses up. So uh, not a good, not a good addition to the, to the addiction. So, and the point of this is that eventually addiction becomes survival. That is your brain actually believes that like food and sex, particularly food, that, that it needs to survive, that it also needs these substances to survive. You cannot go without this substance and, and hence you end up taking the time to try to find and use the substance uh, and so forth. So I'm sorry, this is like a little weird. I don't know why it wasn't like this on my computer. Anyway, um, so just to use an example, in the DSM-5, nicotine, it's actually called tobacco use disorder, but of course any nicotine actually is, probably should be nicotine use disorder, um, in the DSM-5, and again, it was in other, other DSMs, gives you a sense of what happens, and you don't need much. <laughs> uh, two of these 11 things in the past 12 months uh, and of course, tolerance and withdrawal are naturally occurring events with substance use. So over time, your brain becomes less sensitive to the substance, uh, and that's tolerance. And so you need more cigarettes, uh, as I, really what we're talking about today, or more vaping, uh, hits of vape, and so forth. And then withdrawal, when you stop the substance, because of that same issue, your receptors are now saying, wait a minute, you just took away my, in quotes, food, uh, and I don't like that, and then you start having all sorts of side effects, potentially all over the body, depending on the substance, like, like opiates affect a lot of receptors all over the body, so you have a lot of different effects uh, in, on the body with that. Even nicotine, people complain about how it feels to not have their nicotine uh, in, their, in their bloodstream. Uh, you can see that there's been a lot of work at the governmental level on tobacco, in particular smoking, uh, and yet even with that, it took a long fought battle to win the battle with the tobacco companies uh, and uh, be able to say, hey, this really is causing all these cancer deaths. Uh, we need to do something about it. And it is in fact uh, the leading cause of cancer deaths, at least in terms of what we know about. Uh, and there are many more deaths from tobacco than even from alcohol use disorder and even more uh, that be below that, but, but still significant right now are opiate deaths. So what have we learned? So we know that smoking risks are even more deadly than 50 years ago. Uh, there's been stronger uh, chemicals being used. Over time, you can see 7,000 chemicals. At least 70 of them have been proven uh, definitively to cause cancer, not correlational, but actually causational, uh, which takes a lot of research to come to be able to say that. Uh, these slides are, by the way, are from the CDC. Uh, it affects almost every organ in the body, which is which is horrible, of course. And there's also no safe level of secondhand as SHS exposure, right? So that is bad. That's part of the reason and one of the ways that from a public health initiative, we were able to move smoking out of restaurants, out of businesses, and out and outdoors. Uh, and even there, sometimes a certain number of feet from a doorway and that sort of thing uh, to uh, prevent that. Um, Look at the data here. Nearly half a million premature deaths per year uh, between 2010 and 2014. That's a lot, way more than opiates, right? We're talking about horrible, horrible opiate deaths. This is way beyond those numbers, uh, way beyond everything else. Uh, and you see here how it's tied then to pulmonary and coronary deaths. So we think about the leading causes of death as cancer and cardiovascular disease, and cigarettes are confined to both of those circumstances. Uh, children is a problem. The younger you start any addictive substance, 
the more likely you are to go on and have a substance use disorder, not necessarily that substance, but of a substance later in life. So hence the, the push now, and there has of course been recent laws passed to move uh, this to age 21. If we can get nobody to smoke uh, until after age 21, the likelihood of, of serious addiction and the problems that come with it after that fact are much lower than if it happens before 18. So that's one of the reasons we're doing that. Uh, for every adult who dies early because of smoking, they're replaced by two new young smokers. That is the relation to wonderful marketing, flavors and all this stuff. And so for young people, and I'll jump to maybe a few moments here, uh, for young people, vaping, unfortunately, is a gateway drug to actually smoking cigarettes. Whereas for somebody who is a smoker, maybe they're 30 years old, maybe they're 60 years old, they can use vaping as a nicotine replacement and actually use it to get off of cigarettes. Uh, but it has truly been shown to be the reverse in young individuals. So that's, that's a problem. So guess what? The companies that sell tobacco are really good at selling tobacco and they figure that out. So they have spent a lot of energy now targeting our young folks, uh, trying to get them to become uh, cigarette users. Uh, anyway, so a lot of people, you see how many people they believe will ultimately die early from smoking, 5.6 million children right now, if we don't do something to stop the current smoking rates. That's pretty horrible. Right? We know what's going to happen. This is uh, sadly, in, in a sad way, evidence-based. Uh, so it's sadly the, the case that we know what could happen uh, and we need to do something about it. So that's equal, by the way, to one out of every 13 children alive today. That's a lot of early death. Uh, that is clearly avoidable and preventable. Again, I won't go through all these in detail, but we'll have the slides available. Uh, but yes, again, cancer, huge, one in three of the cancer deaths in the United States are tobacco related, even now after we've decreased a lot of smoking. Uh, nationally, liver cancer, uh, colorectal cancer, all sorts of things, breathing, COPD, huge issue. It's a huge cost in emerging departments. Uh, so in fact, one of the big old, biggest single problems in ERs as people show up, difficulty breathing, that certainly would bring me to the ER. Uh, and that, but the problem is it's often tied to uh, tobacco, which wouldn't be my cause, but there certainly are plenty of people who are smoking. I mentioned cardiovascular disease again. It's a major cause of that. Again, cardiovascular disease uh, is uh, one of the top causes of death for all of us, where everyone's gonna die from something. It tends to be uh, uh, from cancer or heart. Uh, those tend to be the two uh, problems for all of us. Tied to diabetes as well, and we all know the ravages of diabetes uh, across the lifespan. Uh, that, so that's horrible, particularly type two, 2 diabetes and smokers. Is that because uh, it impacts your ability to regulate your insulin levels? Is that yes. why? Wow. Yeah, okay. So it ties, it ties, because again, it's affecting all the organs. So all, okay. one of the organs that affects is the pancreas. Okay. So, it really does affect all the organs in the body, uh, brain included, obviously, not just the addictive component, but over time, uh, it, it tends to then, as you take a nicotine hit, there is uh, some contraction of the blood vessels, and so over time, that, that has negative effects, uh, damaging the vessels and so forth. Uh, eye disease, another big problem, right? So we see a lot of cataracts. People aren't as scared about them as they used to be because that's pretty easy surgery nowadays. However, uh, macular degeneration is a horrible uh, disease to have in terms of your vision. The macula is the center part of your vision. So you're actually losing your best vision uh, in this case if you were to uh, have this caused by your smoking. Uh, because of all the other advances in medicine, smokers are sicker longer and of course more often because we can keep them alive. Uh, well, guess what? That means that the costs to all of us related to smoking are even worse now than they were uh, when we first realized uh, about 50 years ago that smoking was horrible uh, for us in a health wise. Uh, it didn't used to be known, of course, when tobacco was originally around for a lot, lots and lots of years, uh, people smoked and some smoked three packs a day and nobody realized it was leading to the early deaths. Eventually it got proven and then it took a long battle to prove that in the courts, <laughs> uh, basically. So it really is still an epidemic uh, per the CDC. Uh, we talk about an opiate epidemic. We still have a smoking epidemic. Uh, despite a decrease uh, over time, because we have actually had a number of people uh, decrease uh, their smoking, we have had less secondhand uh, smoke exposure, which is also good. It's, but it continues to be a problem, and really, until we get to zero, it's a problem. It's, it's an illness, 
an addictive illness that we need to figure out a way to just never have happen anymore. And of course, it's a problem in other countries as well, but it's, it, is, it continues to be a particular problem here. Uh, questions about tobacco before I jump to vaping more quickly. Okay, so uh, vaping. So this, this is a little bit dated because that's, that's where the national data comes from uh, through our public health department and the, and the State Department of Health. Uh, but you can see this slide yourselves. I'll just mention when we did our youth risk behavior survey uh, in Summit County, so we surveyed almost every middle and high school uh, in 2018. Uh, the previous one we had done was they do every five years was 2013. In 2013, vaping didn't show up anywhere in the survey. In 2018, it was through the roof. <laughs> uh, and it's amazing how much changed in five years. Now, smoking itself had, in fact, decreased on the survey. Uh, and part of that is that, that vaping is an easy way to replace it. And the other reason is vaping is easier to hide if you're a student in school. So you can go vape in the bathroom and not get caught because there's not a cloud of smoke falling out of the bathroom as you walk out. Uh, whereas if you're vaping, it just kind of dissipates. They, yeah, they might smell the cherry smell or stuff that they've used to encourage young folks to vape by making them flavored and scented and so forth. Uh, but you, it's kind of hard for the vice uh, principal, who's usually the uh, uh, person who dictates behaviors in the school, it's hard for the vice principal, him or her, to do anything about it because they can't really say, well, you smell like cherry, so you must be vaping. Well, that's not enough uh, in, in our world. So. Um, so in 2019, uh, you can see traditional smoking, as I mentioned, fell, which is great. I mean, that's an awesome thing from a later on death, 13.5% down to 5.8%. Uh, and again, these are anonymous surveys. This is actually pulled from a youth risk behavior survey. Um, it's an anonymous survey, but in general, people don't still don't believe things are anonymous, especially with hacking and the sense that Google's watching you and the government's watching you and, and so forth. So that's probably an underestimate, meaning that if 5.8% said they're using it, it's probably actually a little higher, but it was also higher than 13.5 in the beginning one because not everybody admitted to it then. So it's probably still a good gauge of a big decrease. But look at the vaping. As I said, it was zero in 2013. Uh, so in that five-year window, we've seen it grow. Uh, and I, so I mentioned big tobacco. Uh, Juul is the first of the e-cigarettes, the one you hear about, like Kleenex uh, for tissues, right? We, many of us still say, Clean, give me a Kleenex, even though it, they're actually visual tissues. Um, does anybody know who owns Juul? Okay. Who, who knows the best about addicting people to nicotine? The cigarette companies. Philip Morris, you got it. Oh. So Philip Morris, figured out they could do two things as we were fighting against, remember they also lost billions of dollars in lawsuits finally, uh, probably less than they should have because some of the officers are still standing and addicting everybody. Uh, and so the net result is uh, that they have been targeting our young folk with cigarettes uh, and vaping and of course the older adults with, with vaping as well and they, they're making a killing uh, off of vaping, especially since now some of the electronic cigarettes uh, you can take it out and put other things in there to vape, uh, uh, such as uh, cannabis oil. So, um, so you can see here just real quickly, uh, for time's sake, you know what our uh, chain, or how much it was accurate, and then the suburbs. So we did again. We all had almost every middle and high school represented uh, who actually agreed to have their to all, every student then in their schools do these uh, surveys. Um, Again, lots of cancer-causing chemicals, even in the vaping products. <laughs> so it's not like it's just nicotine. You've got to have a medium for the nicotine. And unfortunately, some of the parts of the medium uh, have now been shown to be toxic, like fruit flavors, <laughs> uh, right? So hey, let's target the kids and let's kill them slowly with this stuff. And here's again the problem. You can't always identify who the vapors are as easily as the cigarette smokers, because you can smell it on their clothing, their hair, the trail behind them as you're walking behind them and so forth. Okay, uh, dual use. Uh, so e-cigarettes are actually not FDA approved as a cessation method. We have other ones. We have the uh, lozenges, we have the gum, we have the patches. Uh, there's even a, like a powdered inhaler that's more sort of shaped like a cigarette. So you can pretend you're, it's, they get the habit part in there and so forth. A lot of resources to help people quit both tobacco 
uh, in terms of particularly smoking, but obviously chewing is not good for you either, but it's different uh, as well as vaping. Uh, the under 21 piece, which was successful uh, in recent times, but initially a little tenuous. There was a lot of fights over, over this. Why? Businesses. Business, well, I'm gonna lose a lot of money if I can't sell cigarettes. And yeah, I never sell them to anybody under 18, yeah, I'm sure. And then, then I moved it up to make it a little harder to say that. <laughs> and then here's a bunch of resources uh, that you can go to around tobacco. These include some things for vaping as well as uh, tobacco. Awesome. All right, thank you.